Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to talk about the most recent position that I've entered in my portfolio. I've been looking at this company for a while and just started entering the position in July. I've purchased 100 shares at this point and will most likely add on to it throughout July and August after their annual results come out. The company that I've bought a position in is ConAgra. You may or may not have heard of them. They are a branded food company. If you're not sure what that is, their main comp competition are companies like Kraft Heinz, Tyson, PepsiCo, and General Mills. So while you may not be familiar with Conagra brands, you're most definitely familiar actually with some of the products that they sell in the grocery store. Some of their main brands are Slim Jim, Healthy Choice, Hunts, Marie Callender, Ready Whip, Vlasic, Orville Redenbacher, Swiss Miss, Snack Pack, and the list goes on. They actually have around 70 brands that they own and sell throughout grocery stores, and this is their main business line generating revenue. It generates about 10 billion of their 12 billion in annual revenues. The company is led by Sean Connolly, who has been with ConAgra for almost a decade. Prior to ConAgra, he was the CEO of Hillshire Brands, which he ended up selling to Tyson Foods, and prior to that, he was CEO of Sarah Lee. Before that, he led the North American operations for Campbell Soup. Looking at the rest of the leadership, most of them appear to have been with ConAgra for five plus years, which is a very good sign for stability. The stock is currently trading around its five-year low at roughly $30 per share as of July 9th at market close. A few things driving this is mainly inflation. Consumers tend to price down and buy generics during times of high inflation and recessions. This has resulted in volumes for ConAgra being down, which is actually being offset mostly by pricing increases. For 2024 through nine months, they're on pace to end at a one to 2% revenue decline or possibly even flat to 2023 revenues. I believe this is a short-term headwind that they face as inflation has continued to cool and I believe it'll continue to cool over the years to come. And then we'll see a return to a nominal amount of revenue growth around three to 5% annually. Quickly, a few call outs before I hop into my model. They do have a decent debt load around eight and a half billion or about three and a half times EBITDA from an acquisition that they actually performed back in 2019 for Pinnacle Foods. The debt was around 12 billion shortly after the acquisition and has actually been coming down ever since. They are considered an investment grade firm though by the ratings agencies, so no, no concerns of default on this debt. They also pay a decent dividend that is currently around a 5% yield with the shares trading around $30. They are not a high growth or sexy company by any means. They sell packaged food. So anticipate slow growth going forward with acquisitions being a large driver of future growth. If you're new around here, I wanted to quickly point out that you can follow along to any of my valuation videos. All you need to do is scroll down to the description and there will be a link for the model. You will need to make a copy of this model, but that will then grant you edit access so you can follow along and adjust my assumptions as needed. So let's hop into the model quickly. A quick note, when I'm looking at companies to buy, to buy a position in, I wanna be conservative in all of my assumptions. I wanna assume what I consider a worst case to ensure there is additional margin of safety. I've made no adjustments to COGS or SGNA as a percentage of revenue. I have modeled three different versions, a no growth, a low growth, and a medium growth version. The difference between all three is the assumed revenue growth rate. For the no growth, I have revenues declining every year by 2%. For the low growth, I have revenues growing by 3%. And for the medium growth, I have revenues growing by 5%. As we can see in the no growth case, we get a market cap of six and a half billion. Not great for the low growth, we get a market cap of 12 and a half billion, which is better. And then in the medium growth, we get a market cap of 15 and a half billion. I'm quoting the middle of the ranges here, which is assuming a 10% cost of capital. On the surface, this doesn't actually seem like an amazing value play. Their current mar market cap is around 13.8 billion. So they would need 5% revenue growth to be undervalued. And that would be a nominal amount of undervalue. However, the thing that I really like here is they are paying off about 500 million of their debt annually. Every dollar they pay off to, the, to debt should actually directly flow back to equity holders. Their enterprise value is significantly higher in each scenario. In the no growth scenario, enterprise value is 15 billion. However, backing out their net debt, we actually get a equity value of six and a half billion. In the low growth scenario, enterprise value is 21 billion, while the equity value is 12 and a half. And in the medium growth, equity value is 24 billion, Enterprise value is 24 billion, while the equity value is 15 and a half billion. An easier way to think about this is they have really strong cash flows. With the relatively high debt load, it's suppressing their market cap. 
They're flowing around one and a half billion in cash annually for a company trading at a market cap of 13.8 billion. That's around an 11% free cash flow yield. The S&P on an unweighted basis has an average of a 4% free cash flow yield. And on a weighted basis, meaning skewing towards big tech, the free cash flow is 9.8%. So Conagra is still outperforming both of those scenarios. So if we take a basic assumption that they are currently fairly valued, assuming a 3 to 5% annual growth rate, layer in the 5% annual dividend yield, and then 4% for debt repayment, based off making paying off 500 million annually, you're gonna get a 9% yield just from debt payment and dividends. There are no cash flow problems that I can see that would not allow for this scenario to happen. And I think once inflation settles, having a 5% plus growth rate is definitely possible as consumer spending picks back up. Anyways, this was a quick one. I like the way things are shaping up for them. Cash flows are strong and the environment they're operating in seems to be improving as inflation starts to cool. I do have a relatively small position. It's 100 shares and that's about $3,000, but I do like the future outlook and think that at these prices, from just debt payoff and dividends with a little bit of minimal growth, this should easily be a 10% plus annual return over the long term. I don't think this stock will appreciate tomorrow. I think it will take a year or two of growth on the revenue on the top line with continuing to keep costs under control. And then you layer in the dividend as well, but I could easily see them trading closer to a $20 billion market cap in the next two years, which would be a 30% total return or you know a little over 13 to 14% annually if it happens in two years. So anyways, leave any of your questions or comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks so much.